Okay, so if I claim things are wrong, how wrong are they? Well, guess what? I say they can't get any wronger than they are. So here we are in the Earth. Now, if Hubble took his information from Einstein, so he's saying light is going exactly the same speed, no matter where it comes from, which is totally incorrect. So, if Hubble was correct, we would be the center of the universe. Everything is going away from us, so we're obviously spitting everything out into the universe. Well, it's just nonsense. If it's dense here, the light that comes from there will not come at the same speed as it will if it's a very bright spot here and no density, pew, it's going to shoot out like a bullet. Over here, it's going to just lumber out of there because it's being pulled back. That's the redshift. Yes, there's redshift. No question whatsoever. However, however, the redshift is dependent upon the mass of the district that it is created from. So if this district is very sparse and it's shooting out exactly uh, a certain frequency of light, it will come fast to us because there is very little to pull it back. If this is dense, it will come slow to us because there is a lot to pull it back. These things aren't flying away from us the light is simply slowing down. It's so obvious, it's very hard to believe that this has happened. And it's because of Einstein. So Hubble and Einstein were wrong. Light simply slows down. And if that's true, how slow does it get? From where is it coming? And how slow is it? And we're, we are now lost in space. Okay, here comes the important part. 2007. The big discovery came on June 3rd of the same year when the five probes serendipitously flew through the breach just as it was opening. Onboard sensors recorded a torrent of solar wind particles streaming into the magnetosphere, signaling an event of unexpected size and importance. The opening was huge, four times wider than Earth itself, says Wen Hu Li, a space physicist at the University of New Hampshire who has been analyzing the data. Li's colleague, Jimmy Rader, also of New Hampshire, says 10 to the 27 particles per second were flowing into the magnetosphere. That's a 10 followed by 27 zeros. This kind of influx is an order of magnitude greater than what we thought was possible. The event began with little warning when a gentle gust of solar wind delivered a bundle of magnetic fields from the sun to earth. Like an octopus wrapping its tentacles around a big clam, solar magnetic fields draped themselves around the magnetosphere and basically cracked it open. The cracking was accomplished by means of a process called magnetic reconnection. High above Earth's poles, solar and terrestrial magnetic fields linked up or reconnected to form conduits for solar wind. Conduits over the Arctic and Antarctic quickly expanded. Within minutes, they overlapped over Earth's equator to create the biggest magnetic breach ever recorded by Earth-orbiting spacecraft. The size of the breach took researchers by surprise. We've seen things like this before, says Rader, but never on such a large scale. The entire day side of the magnetosphere was open to the solar wind. The circ All right, the entire day side. Circumstances of the breach yeah. were even more surprising. Space physicists have long believed that holes in Earth's magnetosphere open only in response to solar magnetic fields that point south. The Great Breach of June 2007, however, opened in response to a solar magnetic field that pointed north. To the layperson, this may sound like a quibble, but to a space physicist, it is almost seismic, says Seibeck. When I tell my colleagues, most react with skepticism, as if I'm trying to convince them that the sun rises in the west. Here is why they can't believe their ears. The solar wind presses against Earth's magnetosphere almost directly above the equator, where our planet's magnetic field points north. Suppose a bundle of solar magnetism comes along, and it points north too. The two fields should reinforce one another, strengthening Earth's magnetic defenses and slamming the door shut on the solar wind. In the language of space physics, a north-pointing solar magnetic field is called a northern IMF, and it is synonymous with shields up. All right. If it's if if it's facing the same field direction as the Earth's field, 
it's going to impact. So in other words, if you got positive, the positive is going to impact. You got negative, the negative is going to impact. Whatever. But if you got negative to positive, I don't care which one's on which side, they're going to come together. So you can imagine our surprise when the Northern IMF came along and shields went down instead, says Cybeck. This completely overturns our understanding of things. Well, then they just fully didn't understand it, obviously. If it came up and it went into the attractive mode instead of the forcing apart mode, the forcing apart mode creates these f larger field effects. The pulling together mode just transfers electrons in, just like they said, cascading in in buckets and streams. These northern IMF events don't actually trigger geomagnetic storms, notes Rader. But they do set the stage for storms by loading the magnetosphere with plasma. A loaded magnetosphere is primed for aurora borealis, power outages, and other disturbances that can result when, say, a coronal mass ejection. Exactly. Exactly. These sprites that we're seeing, there's a new anomaly called Steve's, which are <clears throat> tremendous, of you know, um, particles going out into space instead of coming to Earth. They're supposed to come to Earth. They're not supposed to be here and going up into space. They're seeing these beams of light going out into space all over the Earth. I've been reporting on this for years now. This goes back to 2008. So they, this is a new anomaly. We are entering a new place in space. It's going to overheat us. It's overheating everything in the solar system right now. So that is what this anomaly is. These are Something's going on in the space we're invading. And that's what we're doing. We're spinning into new space. It's a new space every day. And it's been consistent, let's say. But who's to say we're not entering a certain phase? And probably the ancients knew this phase was coming. Maybe they're hiding inside the earth. I don't know what they're doing. I have no clue. But it's, to me, I'm seeing, and, and, and we're seeing it. It's not, it's not something that I'm just making up, making guesses. This is an interaction that's quite obviously seen right now. So, all right, I want to make something extremely clear. They continuously talk about carbon dioxide. That's the only thing that's affecting our, our climate. Greenhouse gas, case closed, all kinds of this and that. Well, no. I hate fossil fuels. We have to stop that 100%, yes. However, this Earth is being flooded with electrons. Electrons are heat. Case closed. Every electron is another click of heat. Whenever you shine a light on something or you, every electron that hits something warms it up. That is what electron activity is, electricity, electrons. All right? And if they're cascading through holes in our atmosphere, they're supposed to push them out of here. We are being flooded with particles that are not supposed to be here. Now, that has nothing to do with carbon dioxide. And I think we're putting our, all our apples in the wrong basket. We've got to start looking at to really what is happening. And we are going into a different region in space. We are opening up holes in our atmosphere. Nothing we can do about it, I don't think. If the, part, if the Earth magnetically is shifting, that's not our, our fault. It's the, the region that we're hitting. And I showed you how it was pushing the... The, the earth in a whole different manner, very, very dramatically. So I think we got to do a little more thinking is my point. Instead of just jumping and saying, oh, this is what it is, case closed, that's the end of it. And every single thing in science happens that way. So one guy has a name and his name carries enough weight that everybody else has to bow down. And that's what happened with Einstein right up to today. It's crazy. Right here explains they have no clue what they're talking about. Fluid dynamics, I don't know if there's fluid in there or not, but I can tell you what there is. There's magnetic stripes on the surface of the Earth, in the oceans. All over they can see them. There's plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. When that spins, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, spins and spins and spins, through a cloud of magnetic particles that are swishing past it, it is creating... A generator effect which creates this it has nothing to do with it maybe has something to do with that I have no clue but they can, they have no idea what the earth is made of they're just so lost the earth is made out of bio, biology not just old dead dust they will never ever get to the to truth of anything 
It's just so lost. It's just amazing. There's no way in the world we're ever going to get to the truth of anything until they stop and listen and think. All right, this is from 2009. This is RWNSD, and it's from the NASA govern, governor headlines, government headlines. Now, here's what it's going to say, and um, I'm going to speak to it. They found a giant breach in Earth's magnetic field. Now, I have studied the magnetic field, and I, in NASA stuff, you can, some stuff is nonsense, and stuff, some stuff is real. Just pay attention to reality. That's all I want you to do. Field aligned with that of the Earth than when they're pointed in opposite directions. In the past, researchers found that the energy from the sun gets into the Earth's magnetic field during periods when the sun's magnetic field points southward. Here we found that the particles get in, the plasma, the particles from the sun, get into the Earth's magnetic field when the sun's magnetic field points northward. All right, this obviously the polarity, when I'm talking about everything in space is filled with particles. If you have a negative propensity coming this way, Earth has a negative shell around itself. There's just no, it, it, that's what happens. The ionosphere is a negative shell. Bam. So, it, you don't have a whole lot of particle interference because they're pushing each other away. Now, if this was positive and this is negative, which it is, whew, that's when your particles enter. For a long time, people have known that the location where particles and energy get into the Earth's magnetic field depend on the orientation of the Sun's magnetic field. But they just hadn't realized how many particles get in for the northward orientation of the sun's magnetic field. So what? Okay, he, he, just what he said, a northward orientation of the sun's magnetic field. That means the northward orientation.